My name is Leander Fair. I'm from Asuncion, Paraguay, South America, and you are watching Trucker Josh Vlogs with Diesel. Here at Saskatoon Flying J. Let me put you guys down here for a sec. One second. Just grabbing some fuel. We've got to head to Calgary now. I really wish both sides would fuel at the same time. In the US, you can fuel both tanks at the same time. In Canada, you can only feel one side. You can only feel one side at a time. So it takes twice as long. Good thing there's no real lineup here today though. So we delivered our freight here this morning in Saskatoon. Just three packages. And we got another, I think, three packages that are going to Calgary. Very small. Maybe two, two packages going to Calgary. And then we head down to the lower mainland of BC on the other side of the Rocky Mountains. That's our lucky number today, apparently. Just a small fill up. All right, so now that we're fueled up, what I do is I take my phone and I go into a, an app I have. Uh, it's called Fuel to Go or Fuel, something like that. And I punch in how many liters I bought, what the price of the fuel was, and my odometer, and it keeps track of all my fuel mileage for me. That way I, it, it motivates me to, to sort of go for the, sounds funny, go for the low score, shoot for the low score. I'm trying to get uh, the lowest liters per hundred kilometers that I can get. I guess if you were talking in American, miles per gallon, you'd be going for the high score, getting as many miles per gallon as possible. It's a little backwards with liters and... I work in liters, I work in metric. I know. Actually, I'm, I'm not the weird one here. Actually, I'm more the mainstream one. The Americans are not the mainstream, they're the weird ones going on the weird miles and gallons and inches and feet. Like, how many feet in a mile? 5,280. Why? Why not just make it 6,000? Make it easy, like, kilometers. How many meters in a kilometer? 1,000. It's fine. <laughs> just here in North America, for me, driving between Canada and the US, the US have just so many more people, such a larger population and a lot more influence. You know, America's biggest export is their culture out of Silicon Valley, unfortunately. That's not exactly what you wanna want to spread very far, but it is what it is and it's being exported. They export their culture through movies and entertainment. And uh, so you, you just sort of get used to hearing the feet and miles and inches and the whole world sort of is influenced by that. America is a very influential country in the world. Uh, not only the most physically powerful with their own military, they're also the most... They hold all of the big industries, you know, like YouTube, Google, uh, Apple. What are all some other big ones? Um, uh, you know, all the big tech giants, Twitter, Facebook, those are all American companies based in America. So they, they do hold a lot of influence over the world. And, you know, it's a good thing that uh, they're the good guys. I mean, depending who you talk to, right? There's two sides to every coin, but I think I'm on the right side of this coin saying that they're the good guys. And I'd rather them have all the power than a country, you know, like, I don't know, Iran or North Korea or, you know, places that probably shouldn't have that much power at this point in history. Maybe history will change and... You know, it always does. Iran used to be a very, very different country. I've studied the history of Iran before, uh, just because I, I mention it now. But uh, it used to be a very different country. But in the last century, it's it's changed quite a bit, quite a bit. And it's not really a place I'd want to go visit now. But I wouldn't mind going to visit it before, if it ever goes back to the old ways. 
nice. Really nice country at one point. Anyways, enough of that. Going from Saskatoon to Calgary means two lane roads. There are no main main routes, big four lane divided highways going between the cities, which I'm surprised at, sort of. But I guess there's just not enough traffic yet to warrant it. Not much traffic at all in Canada, come to think of it, so all we really need are two lane roads, I guess, but a four lane would be nice. They're always safer and just better. Because we're running into the same problem today that we usually do on two lane roads, you know? You spend an hour behind somebody doing 20 below the speed limit, you know, you finally get a chance to pass them and they speed up to, you know, 10 above the speed limit so you can't get around them. And so you sit behind them for an hour or two or three and then you finally get a chance to get past them, right? And you're so excited, finally, freedom. And then just to find out there's another slow person doing the exact same thing down the road in front of them. So there's a big long lineup now. Uh, we all sort of spread ourselves out a little bit now. Cause we all know we just, we've just we given up trying to get past this guy. We're doing about 100 right now, but uh, it's a speed limit. But we'll go down to about 80 for the most part. And every time someone pulls out to try to pass him, he speeds up to about 110, 120. So I'm governed at 105, so there's no way I can get around him. I can't pass everyone in front of me and the guy who's at the front here. He looks like he's hauling refrigerated liquid. I'm not too sure, but... Yep, you guys know the deal. Two-lane highways, always the same. I don't know why people do this. There's no way that that instances like this happen and they don't realize it. Like, they, they can look in their mirror, see a long line up behind them, and then eventually one person pulls out to pass, right? And they speed up and that person goes back in behind them and then they pull out to pass and to go back in behind them, speeds up, slows down, speeds up. There's, there's no way he doesn't realize what he's doing. So why? Why do people do that? I know none of you do that, but why? I mean, for myself, when I'm on a two-lane road like this, I've said it countless times, and I'm trying to sort of wear off on you guys a little bit, I guess, but two-lane road, and I see somebody like right up behind me that wants to pass me. When he pulls out to pass, and it's safe to pass, I will slow down. I will let off the throttle. I will slow down and make it easy for him to get past me as fast as possible, because I already know that he's going to go faster than me, right? So I would be pretty upset, though, if he went in front of me and went slower than I was already going. Yeah, of course, I'd be mad, but I just don't understand why people don't help other drivers out. Why are people so self-centered and so selfish that they they only think about themselves on the road? You know, they, they don't want to make it easier for anyone. Do you think that they that they realize what they're doing? They're doing it out of spite, out of purpose, like for no reason, just being mean for no reason? Or do you think that, you know, they, they legitimately don't realize how annoying they're being and how rude they're being? It, it's hard to tell. I think it's 50-50. Some people realize it, some people don't. But yeah, it's it's part of life out here on the road. So when you, I don't I don't bring this up all the time to complain, though I would love to go on a rant about this, but I can't rant every time. I'm just bringing to light what's going on here, and hopefully, you know, next time you guys are on a two-lane highway and someone wants to pass you, you know, maybe you'll remember this video and be like, you know what, I'm gonna make it a little easier for them. I don't know. I don't know. That's just a thought. Just a thought. Uh, you don't have to. There's no law against going below the speed limit and then speeding up when people try to pass you. I mean, I don't think there's there's a law against that. It's just a good way to upset everyone behind you, I think. <laughs> but hey, if you don't care about other people that much, I guess, uh, all right. All right, yeah. All right then. <laughs> Oh, we still got 440 kilometers to go down this road, down across these prairies. Beautiful countryside, though. Some people might not think so. It's pretty boring to some people, but I love it. I love the prairies. I love the farmlands. Feels like home to me. So it's about four and a half, five hours. I'm going to stop for a coffee up here somewhere yet. I'm pretty sure that there's a, a flying J once we get into Alberta. We're still in Saskatchewan here. But as soon as I find a place I can stop at, I'm going to stop for a coffee. This is odd that this stop sign is in the middle of the road. This is apparently the straight lane, I think. I think that's the turning lane. 
Guess these lights are out of out of service, obviously. This is confusing. Okay, the pickup on the left goes, the SUV on the right goes, and then I go. Here we go. They're gonna have to get on that and fix those lights. That's confusing. Who's on? What? pumps are closed here the husky in northeast calgary wow can't even drive through them okay I'm hoping to find a parking spot here because my delivery is just around the corner and i gotta be there tomorrow morning so if I, oh there's a spot there it's pretty tight though oh there's a spot here okay good so there is parking here i've just gotta figure out how i'm gonna get in there gotta go out this driveway and in the next driveway. Let's see if I can get in there. If I can find parking here, that would be fantastic. Oh, lots of parking in the back. Oh, wow, look at that. See, and these are reefers. I don't know if I want to park beside a reefer. So we'll have to see if they're on or not. I can sneak in here. It's a bit of a tight corner to do this in. There we go, like a glove. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Let's see, is that guy's reefer on? Is this guy's reefer on? Not right now, but it might turn on yet. Well, Diesel, what do you think? I changed my mind. I was parked over there beside uh, Atlas, right in over there, but I wasn't comfortable with that spot, so we moved over here, because here we have a tree for a neighbor. And a guy over here, he has a reefer trailer, but it's not loaded, so he's not, or he's not running his reefer. It's just that one Freightliner down the line there with his headlights on, you see him? He's got straight pipes. And he's idling his truck at probably like 1500 RPM. So the whole parking lot is just like rumbling. I guess we can add that to the list of Trucker Josh's pet peeves. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, straight pipes sound great. Loud pipes save lives. All the more power to you, but... If someone comes and parks beside me with straight pipes and idles their truck all night and then idles it at like between 1 and 1500, like 1500 RPM, I'm gonna move. And like, why? It's like a constant subwoofer. 
in your ear all night. It's, it's very hard to sleep. Then again, I'm very picky with my nights and with my sleeping. I like it to be peaceful. You know, maybe some crickets chirping, maybe some birds singing in the morning, maybe the wind blowing into my truck through the vents and through the windows, but it's tough to find a, a quiet parking spot a lot of time because, you know, it's a truck stop. Truck stops are noisy. Trucks are noisy. Uh, so I wonder what they're going to do when it's electric trucks. Like, I'm really curious to see how they're planning on running this industry on electric trucks. I can't see it happening. I mean, it'd be pretty cool if they came out with a like a good one. Like, I know Tesla has one. I'd, I'd try one out. Man, I'd drive it for a full year to test it for them up here in Canada. You want to know how those trucks deal in the winter? Just... As long as I have a reliable spot to charge it. But that's the thing, the infrastructure isn't here. There's no place to take these trucks to charge them. And how long does it take to charge them? Okay, I can go 500 miles on a charge. Woo, that's awesome. How many miles can I get? Can I go when I'm going through the mountains with a heavy load? Is it only 100 miles then? Is it only 300 miles? And when I'm out of a charge, how easy is it to charge it? How quickly does it charge? And what if I run out of charge, like, you know, some people run out of fuel on the highway. It's kind of irresponsible if that happens, but it happens. What happens if you run out of a charge? What if you expect to be able to make it through the mountain passes on your charge, but you're carrying a heavy load and your truck runs out of battery power sooner than you thought it was? This, this is going to happen a lot in the beginning when people are learning how what the range is on these electric trucks, right? So what happens when you run out of electric charge in a remote area of the mountains? Are they going to have, like, mobile battery trucks to come and charge you on the side of the road? Well, that's infrastructure that needs to be built. Shops everywhere have to buy these battery trucks now, which are guaranteed going to cost a couple of hundred thousand dollars. So each shop is going to have to take that investment and take that hit. I don't think they're going to be very happy about that. Because they already have service trucks, but now they're going to have to have, like, an electric service truck. An electric portable charging truck. And... And when you pull up to the fuel stations, where are you gonna, are they gonna have to add in all kinds of electric charging ports? What would be kind of cool is if every single parking spot had a charging port, that would be cool. Very expensive to set that up. But what happens if you don't get a parking spot then, right? You don't get a parking spot, too bad for you, you're not getting a charge. You can't go anywhere in the morning. You gotta wait for someone to leave so that you can charge your truck. No, no, no. Electric trucks are not even... You guys don't have to worry about them. Don't. They're not going to take over anytime soon. There are billions and probably trillions of dollars that need to be invested into all parts of the economy, all parts of the country, the countryside. you got to have regular charging ports along the way, and you got to be able to make it quick. Tr trucks are going to need to be able to get charged, a full charge, in less than half an hour. At least. At least. Maybe an hour. You know, even an hour, that's too long. Like, if you need to fuel up... Right now, it takes me less than 15 minutes to fuel up my truck. How long is it going to take me to charge my truck if it's electric? I just... I don't see it as a threat to the diesel industry at any time in my lifetime. Maybe towards the end of my career, they'll start. But it's going to have to... Like I said, they're going to need so much money to get that going. And then driverless trucks, I'm not worried about that. Everyone's like, oh, what are you gonna do when a robot takes over your job? <laughs> I'm not worried about that. That's not gonna happen. There's no way that they can take away all of our jobs and put a self-driving truck in. Self-driving trucks, they can't back into a dock. They can't deal with all kinds of weather conditions that I deal with up here in Canada. What if it's a snow blizzard and, you know, they run off the lanes, uh, like they, they run off, like they, they stay in the lane by something either in the road or what if something malfunctions what if it's covered in half a foot of snow and they can't tell where the lane is because i can't even tell where the lane is half the time in those snowstorms what are they going to do all these trucks are going to run off the road and take all these families off the road with them in all their minivans and cars and a bunch of people are going to die and sue these electric or these self-driving companies no all it's going to take is one accident they're getting all excited about all these self-driving trucks self-driving this self-driving that all it's going to take is one brutally fatal accident maybe a truck runs a school bus off the road or takes out a like maybe like another Humboldt incident up here except this time it'll be a self-driving truck and who do you blame then who gets punished for that like that with the Humboldt incident 
The guy who, the truck driver who was a negligent driver and shouldn't have been driving in the first place, he got sentenced to eight years in prison. And after he gets out of prison, he's getting deported back to his home country of India. And once you're deported from a country, it's very hard to get a passport to leave your country ever again. So he's pretty much going to be stuck over there for the rest of his life. That's his punishment. What if it was a self-driving truck? Who do you punish? Well, you're going to go after the company who designed that self-driving truck. They're going to get the pants suit off of them and they're going to be put out of business. And there's no way they're going to be able to, to compete with a human driving the truck. Hi, I'm Corey. I'm here in Venerwatu, hoping you enjoyed this episode of Trucker Josh Vlogs. Mm -hmm.